From deep in the Burbank Media District, it's time for another edition of My Burbank Talks, presented by the staff of My Burbank. Now, let's see what's on today's agenda as we join our program. Hello, Burbank. Craig Sherwood here with you once again, along with... Guess who's back? Craig Durling. I am back. We're all awake after that little introduction, aren't there we? we go. Woo! Uh, Good to be back. And of Good course, what's back. a week without Ross Benson? There he is. He's over here. Ah, there goes my tally light. I'm here. Hello. And Craig, why is your face so red? Because I've been, I had a little time in the sun. Sun. The last couple of days. A little, little bit of time in the sun. Oh, you're, you're working, it was something I working one of our award for festivities and congratulations on that. I'm, well, I didn't win anything. Oh, you didn't? I did not take home an Oscar. No, I didn't uh, win one. We, we understand. I that wasn't you, even nominated. Well, you, is it true that you were John Cena's stand-in for John the, Cena? Yeah, was the stand-in for the uh, the naked yeah. part there? Is yeah, that, that was your job. Yeah, I had my my envelope had to be bigger though. Oh, absolutely. Just saying. I'm surprised he didn't come out with a bigger envelope. You know, for some reason. Well, it was cold in the in the theater. I bet. <laughs> they, they keep it chilly in there. Yes. <laughs> Think anyway, but yes, that's where I was all last week working the uh, Oscars, and then I already forget what I was doing last week. I think I was out of town for business, right. and unfortunately, I will be gone the next couple of weeks, so we'll miss the next couple episodes of this. But we'll be back as soon as I can after no, that. I got to keep you, leave you wanting more, right? The Oscars have a road show or something you going on? No, I'm done with the Oscars for the year. Oh, for a year, huh? For the year, that's it. Moving on to the next projects, but I, I will be uh, out of commission the next couple of uh, episodes of this here program. Well, good to have everybody with us once again, um, and once again, and thank you, uh, Ann Harding, because you are the winner Woo-hoo. of this week's Hill Street Cafe gift card for twenty five dollars. Yeah, Ann Harding. All right, Ann, Ann Harding. Harding. So, Congratulations! Thanks for listening. The word was recruits last week, and. She was one of many to send it in, but her name got picked. She's not a recruit, is she? She's not a recruit. Okay. So we will have the gift card and mail to you tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for listening, Anne, and participating. Enjoy your meal at Hill Street Cafe. Hill Street Cafe. And uh, later in the show, we'll have another word of the week, and there'll be another $25 gift card to give you to a lucky listener who sends in that that word to- You have to stick around, though. Yep. You got to stick around. You'd never know when it'll come up. The e- if- email is contest at mybrewing.com. So just so you know, that get your get your uh, your uh, email ready. All we so need to do is- when they hear the word, and it's hard to miss. It is hard, it's hard to, to miss. miss the word, whether you're watching the video later on, if you're not watching live, but if you're listening, we make it really hard to miss the word yep. of the week when it does come up, and then you zip an email to contest at mybrewing.com. But I think we need to tell our winner, they need to check the hours, because you say- Go have a good dinner in the past shows, and on Monday, well, they're true. not open. Monday through Wednesday, they're not open for dinner. Right, only day, lunch, but Thursday, Friday, and the so weekend. So check though. your local Hill Street Cafe schedule. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> and I think he's still doing Kids Eat Free on Thursday, so you guys can bring your kids. Oh. Double down. All right. Double, well, double down. Let's move on to the week that was because that's what this show is all about. Was what, it? What? What? So on on Monday we had uh, it was announced the Burbank Tournament Roses chose the winning float design for the twenty twenty five. Yes, I said twenty twenty five. That's like twenty Rose and a quarter. Parade. Like twenty and a wow. quarter. Uh, the winner is Eric Anderson, who's a longtime volunteer of the Burbank Tournament Roses, and this is his third float he has designed for the city of Burbank. And oh. the parade scene this year is best day ever. Does he get to ride on the float or something because they chose his design? Or does no, he get anything special? Or just the uh, I don't think they've prestige? Come up with their, so, he just does the design. And I don't think they've come up if they're going to do float riders, what music, yeah. what flowers. That's all. Oh, so they don't, they don't even, so, haven't some gotten year, that far. Oh, some years I would think he gets some sort of yeah, accolades. Some for, years they don't have a float rider. Some years they okay. do. But it also has to, and I don't know if this has yet, from the designs, and it was actually on Sunday, but I wrote Monday because Sunday was the previous week's show. Um, they have to send the rendering to um, Pasadena to make sure no other float. Oh yeah, no copy, no copycats is doing the same float. So the, usually Burbank comes up with two designs in case the first and second, but uh, there's a rendering picture. 
which uh, I will send to you. We could add. I, I do have to do that for the name, too, because I know you haven't picked a name yet, but what if the two floats are the same name? I don't think so. Uh, Ralph 1 and Ralph 2? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ralph. 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 Was that like Dobie Gillis? Oh, am I dating myself? <laughs> See, there's our first zap. Yeah. First zap. <laughs> Hi, Dodger. Dodger came over to visit me. That's a first. Yeah, one. because he heard you say Ralph. There you go. Ralph. Hi. It's okay. So. Dodger. Dodger, the uh, My Burbank dog, is yep. hanging around the studio. We, we'll get him on. There he comes. Oh, he's making a. Okay, there he is. He's making his trip. He's over there Hang somewhere. look. I just walked by out of his own shot. Oh, well. Moving on. He's not a Hollywood dog. <laughs> um. Tuesday night was election night in Burbank and affect all of Southern California, affect all of the nation. Well, not most of, most of the nation. Did everybody vote? Oh, wait, can I put everybody on notice? They came out with a float design. If somebody wants to work on the float, you have a whole year to work on it. Yeah, well, I don't think they can work on it until they actually build it first. Well, you get to help build it. They'll okay. even teach you how to weld. So they're always looking for volunteers, right? Volunteers year round. Okay. And you can learn how to weld and work a forklift. I work for free. You're and a volunteer. <laughs> right. Um, so Tuesday was election night. Um, we had a few candidates here in Burbank who were involved in the election process. Uh, congratulations go out to both Nick Schultz and Laura Friedman, who both uh, made it through the primary and will now go to, to the general election. Nick Schultz for the assembly seat in the 44th district and Laura Friedman for the uh, congressional seat in the 30th district. So... Congratulations to both of them. And I, I got to yeah. tell you, I got to tell you what, I think they have a pretty good shot because they're both going against Republicans in the, in the general. And we, it's 72% Democratic voters and 28% Republican voters. And if they just, you know, it's hard for Democrat to lose unless they really screw something up. It's their election to lose, right? It's their election to lose. Um, and I, I was looking, and I looked at the primaries too. It, it was interesting. I only saw one or two Republicans running in these races compared to seven, eight, nine Democrats. So the Democrats are all splitting their voice, their votes up and the Republicans are all getting mostly, that's why a lot of Republicans made the runoff because there was not a lot of selections to make. So I think that a lot of these Democrats kind of shot themselves in the foot. Well, and unfortunately, well, maybe unfortunately, I don't know everybody's different opinion, but we have a couple of names that, uh, that we're very familiar with who. Well, yeah. Did well, not make one, it one being Anthony Portertino, who was also going for the congressional seat came in third, and I got a feeling that if all those votes were broken up, he would have made the runoff with Laura Friedman, but the Republicans not having a lot of contenders snuck in that second place seat there. And I, I got, we, you know, we're all a little bit surprised because yeah. Anthony Portino is a good friend of the city and, and our, our, of, uh, I know Ross, he's a good friend of yours also, and he's done a lot for, for the city and if you feel bad for him, but you know, come, uh, you know, now, January, he's out of a job, and I don't know what's up for him next. Although he could run for Burbank City Council now, th this year, because... He's been a Lock and Yada City Council member, and when he lived up there, now he lives in Burbank. Yes. And, uh, you know, Anthony is... Uh, Election-wise, he might not have made it, but he has some great, you know, the bills that he passed and a lot of things that he does. So I feel uh, confident that... Anthony will move into a good position somewhere. And we've got somebody else who's been on this show before. Yes, we do. Our former mayor, Constantine Anthony, who ran for um, L.A. County District Supervisor in the 5th District. And he actually did a little better than I thought he would do, to tell you the truth. Um, <laughs> you know, he kind of said that, you know, he didn't really expect to win because Laura, not Laura Freeman, I'm sorry, um, yeah, Catherine Carter. Barger, it was up for re-election. And usually the incumbents kind of get their way back in, but now at term limits, this is it for her. So he kind of got a, a practice. Like He'll he give it another whack next Well, he did for city council. He didn't win city council the first time either. It was the second time. So, you know, he can come out for city council or for supervisor again. But this also opens him up to run for city council again this, this year if he wishes. Nick Schultz, however, is barred from running from city council again because state law says you can't run for two seats at once. Oh. So Nick Schultz is now off the council as of January when the, or December actually when the uh, switchover happens. Um, so hopefully, you know, we're, we're rooting for him and hope he makes assembly. I think he'd be a great assembly member. I think he's he's got his stuff together. You know, I think he's got a, a reasonable 
thought process and um, the intelligence. And he's a lawyer, yeah. too. I mean, how do you beat lawyers? But, you know, as we learned when he was... With a bat? <laughs> well, we learned when he did his so marriage did, 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 I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? No. Oh. Did I say that? It was very well, important. One taste, of the reasons that just he... Kidding, just kidding, everybody. You know, everybody said that he got on city council, and now he's just moved, using the seat to move up the ladder. But if you... Listen to his explanation. Yeah. If it, he does not, wait a second, let me get. Okay. If he does not win. He's done. But who represents Burbank? I mean, this is, the assembly is where money is dished out. And if he loses or doesn't run, nobody's at the table fighting for Burbank. So, you know, uh, electing him to that position will help us uh, maybe get my Burbank as a judicated official, uh, start somewhere. You mean, you might become somebody someday? Yeah. Um, you mean the LA Times is not the all, be all, see all, the, the daily newspaper of Burbank that they say they are? Well, if huh? anybody reads the article the other day, their presses have moved. Their presses aren't downtown anymore and haven't been for a while. They but still use presses? They do. They still, they still print newspapers even. Not well, many, but they still... Print newspapers. Well, you know what gets me of that election night? I, I did cover a couple. I got to uh, Laura Friedman's and uh, Nick Schultz's um, campaign watch party or whatever you want to call it. I'll tell you, they built a, the new Taj Mahal for counting the votes, and it was so goddamn slow. Yeah, I, 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 I was here trying to tweet, at the, and I'm waiting an hour, and, they, and the vote ca- count went up 15 votes. Yeah, I'm going an hour. We got 15 votes counted. That's it. I just cannot believe. And uh, people were wondering if you live uptown Burbank, you heard a lot more helicopters that day. People don't understand L.A. County sheriffs from out in the north, Lake Los Angeles, Lancaster. That's how they get their votes down to Norwalk to be voted. A lot of people don't understand that because and a lot of people probably don't also understand that helicopters generally use the freeway system as their freeway system in the sky. You're right. They go over the five freeway. Or down the 134, they try to a, go with the freeways. Are also reliable reference. Yeah, yeah. So, but it uh, kind of got me. Um, I, I, I want to throw one thing for Nick Schultz, so that you know, and and I agree exactly what you're saying. But you know, if you look at you look at Joe Biden, you look at any any of these people in, in politics, they all started out in their town councils or city councils and moved up. To, so yeah, I mean, do we hate to lose Nick Schultz? Yeah, we do, but no. But I respect the fact that they've started there and right. they still have the passion and want to do even more and no, help even and more. And I'm people. sure he's That's not going to stop at assembly. I'm sure you know he's still young and he is a smart guy, and I think he'll be uh, on the Democrats' radar as far as you know down the line. And I can eventually see him you know moving up the ladder. So I mean, uh, I have no problem with this because I mean they all start somewhere. And it's nice to say they started in Burbank for a change. Well, it's funny, my grandfather was a judicial judge. He was an elected official in Chicago. And um, you get into that political world, and once well, you Especially sit, in Chicago. In Chicago? You know, yeah. Vote early and now vote you know, often? Now you know why we moved out here. <laughs> but once you get into that, you know, doing the Senate or, or Assembly, you, move, you want to move up because there's bigger and better things to... Use your expertise in. Well, he's a smart guy, and I, I, you know, we hope he does well. Um, let's move on. Thursday was the the State of the Union. Now, I, I'm not. We're not here to talk about the the State of the Union or or the Republicans or the Democrats or the policies or anything. Else. That's not what we do here. But I'm going to throw one thing out there, which I think in the, in the trickle down theory to use the, what was that the, the, the Reagan economics is that yeah, that was economics. Um, the trickle down theory, and that is decorum and mm. and it really bothers me that we don't have any more well i mean <laughs> the, the, the president of the united states is, is speaking you know what keep your yap shut and just sit there like you should when you you, you want to go up there and talk become president but I, i'll give you a, a, a quick story when bill clinton was president yeah you know, we're, we're very lucky here in burbank that the presidents will fly into burbank once in a while and we you know, I knew back then because being in the, in the media that he was going to fly from Burbank to uh, Hollywood or somewhere else. And I knew Marine One was going to come basically fly over our house here. Now, my dad was a staunch Republican. I mean, it was, you know, he was a Ronald Reagan's cheerleader, but no doubt. Anyhow, I said, hey, dad, you know, the, the Marine One, if you want to see Marine One fly over, you know, you're, 
it's going to fly. We're going to see what the president's helicopter looks like. All of a sudden, he runs in the house. He grabs the American flag. He runs out in the, the front yard. And when he comes over, he starts waving the American flag. I said, I said, Dad, that, that's good. That's not a replacement. He goes, no, he's my president. And it taught me a lot right there mm -hmm. that, you know what, just because you didn't really like the man, you respect the office. Right. You respect what the man stands for. You know, he stood for the president of the United States. And I think we need to learn, you know, because it trickles down to sometimes our city council meetings when people go up and they dress the council and they start yelling and screaming and swearing. And it, it, it's decorum. It's, you know, you need to keep yourself under under control. You need to check yourself sometimes. There's a, la a lack of respect, and they make it too personal. And, and I really feel, and I, I, I talked to Mike Nolan many times. I, I, he, he loved Mike Nolan, but he'd get up there and he'd start yelling and screaming and and, well, and pounding pointing things. His, pointing his finger. And, and yeah, and, and, the, and yeah. sometimes I was demeaning some of the women up there. And I would say, Mike, you don't understand. You are so smart and you are so right on with so many things, but every time you do that, People lose the message and they see the antics. They don't remember what the message was. That's a good point. So did I ever? Well, and for me, the I'm sorry, Russ, the, real quick, the um, the thing about like the State of the Union is, I also consider it as the whole world is watching, and it's a representation of how we are as a country, how we behave as a country, and how the rest of the world looks at us. And if they if anybody tunes in around the world, and they see how we're behaving. Uh, how the, our leaders are behaving, it's embarrassing. It's an embar a global I embarrassment agree. when we act like that. You know, I, I, I don't know this Marjorie Taylor, Ta or her, her, I don't know any, really much. Yeah. I know she likes to raise, but for her to sit there and just make cat calls and everything else. And, and because she, and she's did that last year. And yeah, it's just, it, it's the year sad. Before. It's just, it's unnecessary and it's sad. And I know the speaker actually asked the members to please show professionalism and decorum during the speech. Well, and, if you if you saw him, um, he would, he was giving hand signals like, you know, he's on yeah, camera. So that was like, his party. Settle down, settle down. Yeah. And I respect him for that because yeah. like I say, you don't have to agree with the man. You don't agree with his policies, but he has that right to that speech, that one hour, two hours, whatever it's going to be that night. That's his, that's his perk of being the president. So yeah, afterwards but, you have your time to re rebut it, you know, and, and have your, your person talk about, you know, what it's all about. I mean, that's fine that you have your time, but not during his speech. Right. Okay, that's that's well, and the and the gentleman that was that shouted out um, was actually he was he's a gold star father. Yes. His son was killed in, in the Afghanistan. during the Afghanistan withdrawal, during the pullout, yeah. And uh, and he, I saw him interviewed today, his first interview, and uh, he says he doesn't even remember doing it. He said that he remembers the president saying something about keep our children safe, and he heard that and it triggered him, and he doesn't had no intention of yelling. No. He just couldn't help himself. Call but now, Bush. unfortunately, they filed charges, criminal charges against him. I, I, and he's looking I, I, at jail time. And there's a whole uh, group, I, of community out there that wants to support him and, and, yeah, I, I, and drop I the charges. Well, hopefully walk. That's yeah, but, you but get a free pass the way that. things go now, they'll they'll make the process, the torture, the punishment. Yeah, him, that's true. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's too bad because that's a, a very traumatic thing. You know, went to serve your country yeah. and... Yeah, it's like okay, they removed them, but now drop the charges. Yeah. You know, when you understand the circumstances. Anyway, I mean, because I, I, I did see him walk him out, and he walked out very. He didn't have, put up a scene or anything oh, else. No, he, no. He walked out very calmly oh, no. and, and and obeyed instructions, and you know he wasn't there to. Yeah, he and he and he went in, did not have the intention no. of doing that. He was invited by a by a, a, a congressman or one of the senators, and hmm. he he well, lost control for a second. But I was just going to bring up. Did I ever tell you guys Monica Lewinsky was a relative of mine? Now that's a topic. She isn't anymore. That's a topic for another <laughs> show. But yeah, you guys, you know, yeah. Wow. There's a cigar joke in there somewhere. <laughs> Give me a tipperillo. What about those elevators over at Metrolink? Let's talk about those. What about, about good segue? Yeah. Good segue. Yeah, we're having our How up about and, them there elevators. We're having our up and downs right now as it is. So let's um. You know, it's, it's, you know, we listen to the radios all the time and. What radio? K-Rock? No, we listen to the, uh, the fire department dispatches. Oh, that's right. I was going to say, I don't listen to that other one anymore. Yeah, well, there's nothing, you know, unless you want to hear past old news. Um, anyhow, the elevator at the Metrolink station on Saturday alone had three different calls for service for truck 11 to respond to. 
people trapped in the elevator. And I'm saying to myself, and, and that's just on one day. And I think we, I've heard it maybe five to seven times this year already. Um, and probably times when I'm not listening and, and, and you know, I, I, between that and the one at, at um, Islands in the city parking structure there, in fact, we're going. I'm going to send an email in and try to get a, a list of how many calls of the the service. Oh, it's become a running joke for us. Yeah, about I mean, the, it's just city elevators. You know, it, it, it's uh, the city's most dangerous elevator. Did I hear them at dangerous. one? Dangerous. You know, to me, that is that white noise that you hear in the back, right? Because they go on it so many times. But did I hear them say once, "We've been on this earlier today." Yeah. And when the fire captain says that, you could tell they're, they're making pretty, a point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, here's the thing though, because that's such a vital transportation hub from the overpass to the Metrolink station. You know, it's either it's either take that elevator, you got to walk all the way or d- down the overpass and walk all the way back. You know, and then some people maybe can't aren't mobile enough, so that's a, it's a necessary elevator. Now they're putting a new elevator in on the Magnolia overpass with that new project they're doing right now, but you know. We, and it's not like they can't not respond because it's a nuisance call. It's not no. like a nuisance There's alarm that they can say, okay, we're going to go three times and we're not going to go back anymore. It's a problem with the yeah. wind or the sensor. You, you've got people stuck in the elevator. And it's you not still the same have, person. It's unfortunately, you have to go. Yeah. Yeah. And they can't turn it off because if they do, those people need the, uh, you know, I mean, they need that elevator. You know what we should do? We should go up there and sell parachutes. Oh, is that? They have to get the doors open first. Oh, I was going to say just jump off the overpass with a parachute. You beat the elevator oh. down anyway. Or a, a, a slide or a, there a, you go, a, a nice slide. pole. A pole. <laughs> yeah, you remember when we wanted to you know Or you know what would be a great idea is to put an elevator in. You mean a working elevator. Problem solved. Oh, a working a elevator. Working, yeah, that, that, that costs that, more. Yes. That costs more. Well, anyhow, uh, talking about all of, I, I may, I may, I may actually. <laughs> Ross is just Mister Segway tonight. Yes. He's just keeping us I, moving. Actually, isn't I, I may do a, a video of the elevators in Burbank. That's what happens when I'm not here calls. for a couple of weeks. See, See? got to keep this thing, this boat moving forward. We, uh, we also posted a story on my Burbank um, uh, this week, and we did a video about the restriping. On a lot of people talked about it at the city council meeting during or- oral communications. So. We actually went there and shot a video of, of what it looked like and what they're doing. And um, on the video is also the city's explanation. Let's roll the tape. <laughs> roll the tape. Ooh, no, we don't have that. We don't have that queued up. It, it's Irma. A, Irma Luce. Irma Luce used to say, roll the video. I thought it was Terma Luce. Terma Luce. <laughs> Irma Luce, she'd get up there. Yeah. She was after them every week. And she'd say to the, turn to the video room and go, roll the video. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Do I, click over to another video on YouTube after you watch this show. Uh, yeah, don't YouTube. get confused, folks. We're talking about the striping on East Olive. Between Glen Oaks and Sunset. But and, there were a lot of people complaining about this, though, right? Well, no, this is... Or no. No, this is... we got too many goddamn problems. We're still about the bus, bus lane thing. Well, the oh, bus lane is the West that Olive. That is month. The, the bus lane is the West Olive. The striping is the East Olive, and wait till we start talking about San Fernando Road. Into technically, minutes. it's Northeast and Southwest, but this is Burbank, which has its own compass. That's right. So, yeah, um, uh, <laughs> David Christie was nice enough to respond to us, and we, we got his quotes in. Um, he I, I gave just, his phone number. I noticed. Yes, I, well, I put his phone number on the video. Oh, you did? Yes, that. I did. Um, so you can talk to him and uh, give me your your points of view. I just don't understand why. He said in in his written the written statement that Olive is not considered a bike, um, a, oh. a bike. Uh, what do you call it? A uh, it's not in the bike master plan. Orange Grove is correct. And I'm going. So Orange Grove is safer to ride a bike on than an Olive with all that room. Well, it's not the room. It's the amount of traffic, and that's what they go by is by those traffic right. numbers. So once you put a single lane in, though, and you put a dedicated bike lane in, isn't that make things a lot, whole lot safer, no matter what the traffic is? No, because now where will the bike go? I'm just wondering, what did they have planned, which they haven't said, but he did say in his notes, kind of, in his response to you, that Orange Grove. I've been, I've been up and down Orange Grove, and I've never seen a sign that, that says, says bike, bike route. Yeah. You know, so when are they going to do that? It makes you wonder. And he also said that the thing on Olive has nothing to do with the Phase 2 on Magnolia. Correct. I saw that. So I, I, I think they're burying that because we, Magnolia Park merchants, we talked about that the well, other night. Scandalo. Well, they, you know what? We asked the question. That's the bottom. You know, we asked the question. You did your job. 
You do diligence. That's all so, we can do. So now with the city must have gotten a grant. I don't know where they come up with this stuff, but they must have bought it. A, a grant a, for paint? Yes, that's what I was just going to say. <laughs> oh, they sorry. must have got a discount yeah. from Sherman Williams or somebody, you know, 3M, to redo, because they're doing East Olive, they're going to do the BRT. Have you ever driven down San Fernando Road yet? There's more yellow Once paint or twice? out there oh. this last couple of days. Yeah? It all goes one way now. What goes one way? Down San Fernando. Down San Fernando goes north. Where the mall used to be. From Angelino to the mall. That's one way? Yep. <laughs> Starting this week. See what happens when you go out of town? For well, I've always advocated, I, I think they should shut that down to pedestrian only anyway. Well, it was. It like was, it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because well then... there's, no, there's no parking worth a darn up there anyway, and everybody is making illegal, illegal U-turns to get into Not spaces. Not anymore, because it's all one way. Yeah, I went up there. That's an email. But which, which way? Northbound? Northbound only. Northeastbound? <laughs> yes. Starting at Angelino. <laughs> but Tamala. At Angelino. Yeah. Tamala went out there with her phone okay. and she shot right. a video because you don't look at Facebook. She responded to. Nobody looks at Facebook. Well, enough people followed her little video that she did. I looked at it the other day and I didn't realize those food areas that they have cutaways for, they've now raised. It is all even. You don't have to step down off the curb to eat in there. They're all now nice, you know, wood. They've moved out those barricades, so there's more of them, so you could eat more. A lot so of, lot gobl- of yellow they're food. gobbling up the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, the, that what happens when the car goes out of control? Those barricades protected the diners. See, that's that's part of it too. I think it it's going to end up being like Third Street Promenade in, in the well, here, here was Santa my, Monica. I went there and took to take a look at it the other day, and I went at Magnolia and. They said street closed. And they had Magnolia northbound down to one lane starting at, at, at front. I'm going, well, why are they closing a lane off on front street? And there was really no reason for it. They're not working on it or anything. And it was taking forever to get through. And, I, and it, the reason why was they never fixed the signals. The signals kept giving, they had trucks. Oh, for right turns had, or something? Yeah, they had trucks parked on the signal indicators on San Fernando. So the signals were going full cycle. To come off San Fernando, and there's no cars because it's oh, closed. Okay. And so everybody's waiting forever for a signal. For cars that weren't going to be coming. Gonna, anyway. And I'm going, why wouldn't they think about things like this? I, I figured this out in five minutes. It, you know, who's the who's the Is that how long there? it took you to get through? Oh, no, no, five minutes just to get through from off the overpass onto, onto Magnolia uh, past front. I mean, oh, it, wow. it, was, it was literally 15 minutes. That's messing things up. Okay. I thought they were supposed to do that project tonight. What's, what time did you go through? About 3.30 in the afternoon. You're a night owl. Oh, okay. I was actually going to try. I didn't know that it started. I thought it was going to start that night. I was actually going to do a video down San Fernando, both directions of traffic. But uh, Too late. Too late. Yes, it is. They have new bollards out there that, you know, separate the lane from the turn. And so, you, yeah, it's. it's oh, it rough. takes some getting used to for. It's going to be a one-year project. And they're going to re- examine it then and decide if they want to. Continue with that, go back to two lanes, or go to no traffic at all. So, okay. one-year experiment. They're getting there. They're getting there. All right. Just so, you know, I, I don't mind them going back to the mall if they want to go back to the mall, but this time, keep the maintenance up. Because remember the last time? They never, the, f- the fountains all broke. They didn't fix them. There was trash everywhere. They never picked it up. You're going to laugh. I used to, that's when the Burbank Leader used to be on Magnolia. Right behind the drugstore and i remember they used to send me out to do man on the street <laughs> i had not only the same was it homeless man on the street homeless man on the street but i ran into our good old friend rich kaufman one day and i said what are you doing on san, on san fernando road he said well i thought this save on had an ice cream parlor well back in the day there was a save on on the mall that had a no, ice cream. Was that Thrifty's? No, it was Thrifty's, but Savon did too. Oh, <laughs> right next to the green chip. Thr- the, Thrifty's the, ice cream was was legendary one time. With the weird scooper, square scooper, or ra- yeah, I don't know. That's it. My zapper isn't working. Well, what else? The, the we way have here? the way back uh, rat hole zapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, also on the um, on the weekend, we uh, Rosh, you, you heard a couple of interesting medical calls. Why don't you? Yeah, somebody sent me a couple of people sent me texts. Uh, apparently, there was a medical call at the farmers market Saturday, and looking. Oh, there we go. Well, they that was a quick call. They got there. They're fast. not there yet. <laughs> but apparently, the looking at the time log of. Uh, online that anybody could look for paramedics were out for an hour and a half it's a long time to be on a first aid call and then the next day and i know there were a lot of people have commented there was a lady living in her van on victory just west of buena vista blue or silver van in fact my son drove by one day and saw a lady slumped over her wheel and called it in and they came out, and she refused date, I guess, or something. They were out there later that day, engine 14, and again, she refused date. I guess uh, there was a car, police car blocking off the road with police line tape and a coroner's vehicle out there. So um, I'm trying to find out. Uh, I believe the lady's name was Colleen. Everybody in the neighborhood knew her, and... Well, sometimes yeah, it's a shame that these, these the homeless people out there is that the correct term? But the homeless people out there really don't want help. I mean, it's not that sometimes they're offered help right. and they just won't take it. And it sounds like she just didn't want the help, no matter how bad she was. And can't force them. No, you can't force them. Well, that's what my son said. You know, he, even though he did the right thing, not knowing, but if she refused aid. Now, my one thought about the call at Farmer's Market, you said it was an hour or more. Do you know if they ended up, if they transported the person or? That's what I'm looking at. Because I'm thinking if they didn't, maybe they just went shopping, got some veggies. Well, I do know that fire station. Potentially that's the case. You never know. Fire station. resets our MDT button. (laughs) Fire station 11 used to go over there and buy their eggs early in the morning, Saturday morning, because they're the freshest. And the guys would buy dozens for several. They go through them pretty quick. Yeah, they yeah. do. So a lot of cooking, a yep. lot of people, hungry firefighters. Well, I think that's it for the week that was, and that was the week that was. That was. It was a quick week. It was. Is that the week that was? It that's was. It was. So let's take oh. a, a quick commercial break, and we will be back with you in a few seconds here, and we'll come back with the week that will be. Enjoying the show right now? Thinking you may want to do your own podcast? Library Talks is renting out our podcast studio on an hourly rate. You can do audio podcasts or both audio and video and even bring in guests to talk with. We will help you get set up on podcast platforms and start a YouTube channel. And we can edit your productions to make you look and sound your very best. If you are interested, please drop us an email at studiorentals at myburbank.com. That's studiorentals at myburbank.com. And we will get back to you. Now, back to our show. And here we go again. Craig Sherwood with you, along with Craig Derling. Still here. And, of course, Ross Benson. tally let's go. we got a week's worth of meetings coming up. Yes, we do. Well, yes, we do have some meetings. Kind of a busy it, week. It, it, interesting that on Monday we usually have four or five meetings. We only really have two. Your favorite thing. Yep. Let's and, pack and, them in. And of the two meetings, one actually got canceled. The, the Planning Commission, I guess, uh, was canceled due to lack of interest. No, I... I they have nothing. Was pl- it was it canceled due to lack of planning? Yeah, lack of. They have nothing planned for the planning oh. commission. So, all right. I, I, you know what? Maybe like I always say, maybe the police commission should learn from things like that. When there's nothing really to talk about, don't have a meeting. Um, we got that teletype machine. Yes, we do. Just for you. You got to do the the thing again with your hand. Ding. Yeah, the Ch-ding. return. Right. Yeah. I just got. From the designer. This Hold on, did. stand by. We have breaking news. Breaking news. From the designer oh. of the float, Eric Anderson said, possibly the float, prehistoric fun, but they might be coming to the community to submit ideas. Oh. Now, you would have heard that here first. There are no other podcasts in this city. I, I just heard it here first. No other podcasts in this city that probably. No other that. live local Burbank podcast. That's right. Has this information <laughs> yet? This just in an exclusive. Just, by the way, we now have a new uh, for breaking news. Are you ready? This is for breaking news now. 
Breaking plates. That's about all I can do for you. I hope his. I hope is his name Eric. It is. I I just hope his winning design included a a, a non functioning elevator. <laughs> well, it is prehistoric. It is prehistoric. Well, much like <laughs> apparently the well, elevators you know what, downtown. If anybody has a question, he threw this at me. Just text it to me. If anybody has a question about his design or his float, send them to us, and he'll be glad to answer them for us. Send them where? Send them to my Burbank. Rose float at my Burbank or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. We, okay. we just have an I mean, email address for everything. Yes, no I, way. I we do Rose now. float questions for Eric at myburbank.com. Well, we thank Eric very much. The force now, is with him. Yes, thank you for that. Okay. Timely now information. Now on Monday. Right, moving on to Monday. All uh, right, it's a whole new week. Planning Commission has been canceled. So the only meeting was scheduled. Um, and, uh, you know, the only thing going on really is, is they're having from uh, Monday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. the Community Services Building. Uh, they had a meeting tonight about the firearm and oh, yeah. ammunition retail uses. Um, it was to to establish zoning regulations for firearms and ammunition retail uses. Um the staff presented an overview of the draft standards, and they will be available for questions and comments. We actually sent one of our uh, freelance reporters, uh, Doug, over to the, the meeting, and he's going to uh, write about it, and we'll have it on tomorrow's website on Tuesday. Um, it says here, all feedback received will be considered in the development of the final draft standards, that no decisions will be made at the informational meeting. And the city council will decide later. I still have... And I need to find this out. I have one question. You know, I originally broke the story on this entire thing and, and talked about all the gun shops and, and the locations of schools and the, the state of California standards and everything else. And I think it said you can't have a a gun store within, I, I think, I, you know, I, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it said 500 feet within a school. And I, you know, of course, kind of Google Maps and I went, okay, here's a gun store, here's a school. And Three or four times, it was under 500 feet, but that was as the crow flies. Because I knew you didn't go out there and walk it. Right. If you go by, if you go by streets, though, it would be over 500 feet. But if you go in a straight line, it's less than 500. Feet. It would make more sense as the crow flies. I would think so. Yeah. But the, I didn't. I looked and looked and looked at the regulations and the. the really? and now the, is that like property line to property line, door to door? That's why I went by. I went from property line to property line. Okay. Because that's going to be your shortest distance, yes. obviously. Well, yeah. Uh, that's still. But that makes sense. Yeah. So I'd like to find out, is that is that state, and if it is, why did Burbank not, inf if it is by the crow flies, why did Burbank not enforce that? Especially on a new gun world, which is within 500 feet of Roosevelt. And, well, they, and it's something they, if they've discovered it now, they, I can't imagine they can undo, right? They can't. Right. They said they can't. No, they can't. Yeah. But, you know, once again. You know, you, know, you, know, you got caught with your pants Missed miss the ball on that one. Yeah. You know, when this whole thing started, the city said, it's going to take us several years. This is not one of those zone text amendments that you got to change overnight over, you know. Well, they have to no, They have to do it later this year because their emergency ordinances run out. But they can also extend them. No, they, they did know. already. They, they only allowed one extension. Oh. So I think it's in August or something. They got a lot, still enough time. But uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll do the right thing. But, you know, I, I still have not heard them put a moratorium on how many gun stores can be in Burbank once they they go out of business. I'm still scared more can come in unless they put a... Well, if they do it right, if, if they go, these stores go away through attrition, then it's a second chance for the city to get it right. Yeah, but there has, the to, be next one that wants has to be something in place. I, I say limit to five gun stores in Burbank. Yeah. And as they, they go out of business or, or move or whatever... And, the attrition goes down. If they get to four, one can come back in the right. city again. But right. until then, right now, there's no reason that they can't add more, which is scary. True. Because, you know, City of LA and Glendale both limit the gun stores. And so, well, what, well, uh, what's in the middle? Burbank. When, let's go there. When they say gun stores, are they include? Are they just talking about, like, brick and mortar gun stores? Or does that include FFL I think that license I, I holders? I think that just includes the gun stores themselves. Oh, no, I believe the FFLs because... The one place that is over near Victory and Five Points, that is in a writer's or a rental place, and they came to Burbank because it allowed FFLs. Right. So, but I, th I think LA County requires FFLs to have an actual storefront. So, 
I, I also want to find out, I think the Burbank um, Emergency Ordinance said that no minors are allowed inside a gun shop under 18 years old. Right. I heard, now Big Five is a gun shop. They sell guns. Well, so, that's, that's interesting. So my question is, I say my question yeah. is, I, have they walled off the gun section so minors can't get in? I've also heard possibly, like Walmart, they may not sell guns there anymore. So I, I do not know, and I'm going to look into that a little bit. I, and I was in uh, Big Five last week, and they don't have- You want to Burbank here? Yeah. They don't have your typical shotguns, rifles oh, no, anymore. No. They've gotten rid of most of, of what you would typically see them selling. They have mostly pellet guns and- and yes. pelicans are fine. Yeah, those 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 aren't typically in included. They but, still uh, hurt when you get shot in yeah, the back. Yeah, well, and, but, but and, and the police will still shoot back if they see one. Well, you, oh man, if you look in the display case at at Big Five, you'd swear they were selling handguns because they have these pellet guns, right? That look and don't don't the paintball guns look, also look like that too? Ex well, these these pellet guns, I'll tell you, look like regular handguns to me, and I've seen a few. Um, but it brings up the question of like a, not to, this is not uh, in a negative way, but like Gunworld, they have their their gun firearm area is fenced in completely, and the rest of the store is regular kind of sporting goods merchandise. So can a miner go into the store, just not into the firearms area? I don't think that is spelled out yet. I, I, I'm sure the new ordinance will be, and it'd be interesting to. And, you know, I I have no problem against the gun shops. I have no problem against. I'm, I'm not saying end the Second Amendment. I, I'm just saying having 14 in a in a five and a half square mile area of Burbank yeah. is not necessary. So you know, I, I support these businesses. Want to see, you know, and, you know, and all these these gun stores have been good. You know, good people in Burbank. You know, they're good businesses. They it's they haven't caused problems. Good, might be good revenue for the city too. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure yeah, they like that sales tax. Oh, I guarantee. You. But um, what's a gun? What's a gun? I even know what a gun costs off. I I don't have one. I don't. Hundred dollars, probably yeah, anywhere really? from three hundred to yeah. several thousand. Are there extra taxes besides? Is it like the gas station well, where you have to pay fire different... like state fees and and uh, okay, so there's... FFL fees, things like that. But it's not not that much. Okay. No, no. But if I recall, once when they made a presentation to city council, they talked about. The front of Gun World, they have blockage, foliards inside, so you can't drive a tank through it. Sure. And they are, they in this new laws, it'll say how far off the sidewalk and what the minimums are. So I know they're making a lot of... Yeah. And even once you're inside, like I said, the firearms counter is completely from rafters to you know, joists, you know, fenced in as a separate secured, securable area. So you've well, asked yeah. to well, make I, a point to go in there. And I, I'd say I'm not against, you know, I, I am against yeah. assault rifles though. I just think there's no, there's no valuable reason. Well, valuable we're opening reason. a whole nother can of worms with that yeah. one. You want to talk that, about that? that? No, but I just think okay. that's, <laughs> that's my only complaint is on. Yeah. But that's, a, it's not relevant Everything else, to that. I, I'm fine. Yeah. The, um, I, I went to Gun World's webpage the other day and like they wrote, we live in this community. We shop here. We live here. Yeah, they're just in a new, bigger location. They expanded, but they were always, they were down the street there for years. For years, yeah. years. So they want to be friendly. They want to be, you know, they want to go by the regulations the city puts. Yeah, they're not looking to cheat the city or break right. the rules. They're, they're community uh, conscious. It's just they're in a, a fairly uh, controversial business, or at least portion of it. And you know what? Honestly, in Burbank... So are marijuana shops, and so are tattoo parlors, yeah. and so are so a lot of cities shops. don't have any, don't allow any tattoo parlors. Burbank is one. Yeah, we don't yeah. allow any of that. So look at you know you wonder about the regulations. That, that's why this. that's why you have that tattoo shop set up in your garage. Shh. Oh, cheat! Oh, edit point. No. Edit point, dear editor. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> the um, is that why I'm here just to disrupt the whole. And you do it so well. Thing I'm getting pretty good at it. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, well, the council's dark. No meeting for the city yeah, council. If they ever find that light switch in city hall, yeah. we'd be in good shape. Maybe, it's, could, maybe it's on the same circuit as the elevators. Could be. Any, every time an elevator goes down. But if you're looking for something to do on Tuesday, the animal shelter is once again offering a a uh, vaccination clinic for, for both dogs and cats. So we have our 
Our dogs and cats, they will be taken care of from two to five at the animal shelter. And you must make an appointment to uh, to get yourself taken care of. It, the it number, does. I'll give you the number, but I know you don't have a pencil on you right now, but it's 818 238 3340. Can we put that on the screen? Oh, you want to spend the time doing the editing too, huh? 818. If you ha- you have time to, to set Ross on fire during his rant, <laughs> come on. 818-238-3340. And it's a low-cost vaccination clinic. Yes, low-cost. Not free. Low-cost. Well, still, still worth it. Absolutely still worth it. Uh, let's see here. Also, it's at 6 p.m. at the jo- Jocelyn Center. I was a little surprised at having this at the Jocelyn Center, but... Um, they're going to have it there. Uh, so the, the Brewing Park and Recreation Department is going to have is going to start conducting a series of public engagement outreach workshops to help identify and determine the needs of Burbank residents and stakeholders regarding future improvements to city parks, amenities, facilities, and recreation programs. Uh, the information they gather is going to um, throughout that process will will guide the ultimate vision. And development of city parks master plan. It's interesting to have it at the the job. It, it is centrally located in the city. I will say that. But you, I know you're over. You're getting up there. You're, you're getting a little senile, and you might have to go check in there. He's tall. He can see the Nile from here. Yes. But you know, Jocelyn has its own parking, handicap accessible, okay. and they have a media room that'll hold five hundred people. I'm not saying they shouldn't have it there. I'm just saying is that every other mean in the world they have the community services building for some reason. They're, but you know, I, I maybe they're expecting a lot of people. Well, it could be they want to have you have it in different locations. They're starting with Jocelyn Center first. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm 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 no problem. It's more centrally located. There's a lot of bathrooms there. You can go out and shoot whatever they play. I think that's, or, that's horseshoes. Horseshoes. Clink. But you know what? I guarantee they're probably going to talk about a little Jocelyn Center in that whole master plan because. Well, that is part of the parks problem. Well, actually, they're you know they're going to redesign completely. Um, I keep calling it all of um, Isaiah Park, George. Yeah, we, we knew George Isaiah. Uh, we, uh, we, people we, probably don't remember our, his or daughter. Favorite. Favorite. That's that's kind of neat that he was named after a park in Burbank. <laughs> yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, Burbank Neighborhood Radio Watch had an office in that building over at Olive Rec. I used to coach baseball games. In that field, until the earthquake destroyed it. Got my zapper. Yep. Here we go. I there sense go. it coming. <laughs> Anyhow, so that, uh, I'm sure there'll be more outreaches, but they are going to redesign completely um, Georgia State Park. Uh, they're going to just raise the entire thing—a new gym, uh, the little theater. I think they're going to try to save the little theater. Um, they can't make it a little, 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 well, they, little littler. They wanted, littler to, put a, they wanted to put a community center in the back of Olive Rec and make that a theater and a rec and, and a uh, meeting hall. And, all. and the people in the theater said, "No, no, no. A theater is a theater. It's not a, it's not a room where we just stick many things into it." So I, I, I get their point. You know, we need the theaters. That sounds like it could be a very productive meeting. They got to. Yeah, we'll see. A lot to talk about. Moving to Wednesday, the Board of Library Trustees. They're going to meet at 530 the Central Library. They're going to talk about digital equity and receive information about the library's efforts to expand digital equity and access to technology. I, you know what? Who knows what that means? I, you know, I mean... I, I can only mean... I, I can only think they're using that very currently popular term to say everybody should be able to have yes. access to the same information, right? I, maybe I got it wrong. Yeah. They're also going to uh, work on improving the children's... Uh, Children area improvements receive information about the coming improvements to space and furnishings in areas that serve children at all the branches of the library. Well, I remember the old, ooh, Lincoln? No, what library was Buena it? Vista Library. Buena Vista Library. And they had the kids' yeah, now, section. It, it was Caddy Corner to where it is now. Well, yeah. Because now it became a, a, a daycare center. Daycare center. But I remember that children's center. Those chairs were only made for children. I, well, I remember the day. I remember the days of Stevenson Elementary School, and our and we would walk to that library once a month. Wow, that you guys, early days of PE. Yes, that was absolutely. Wow. Um, also, going to have talk about National Library Week, and they're going to discuss the city council's proclamation. So, you know, that's why we need more pl- proclamations. Oh, proclamation. Yeah, so more, more proclamations is what we need because yes. 
Yeah, I, prob- well, you have that, all that special paper to use. And what, what do they do with those proclamations once they get them? What I mean, what what is what? What do they do with them? You know, I'm, I'm not patting my own back, but I've received a proclamation or two in my days. And where and are they, they right now? They don't fit in anything. No, so they're, what happens? You fold it in half to get it home, and then it's creased forever, and they and, don't fit and, in anything. And where's they're it now? They're a weird size. Yeah, do, framed on your wall? I've never found a proclamation frame at, ah. uh, at the local store. I mean, Amazon doesn't have that. Uh, Maybe doesn't they have? do now. I don't know. Well, you know it's what's It's been a while funny? since my last proclamation. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you ever look, you know, I do those ribbon cuttings, you know. Yeah, you do. And they, they give either a certificate or a proclamation. The county ones? They're the size of a right, billboard. They have ribbons on them. They have handles. They must have one, one person that knows how to do calligraphy in their left hand and dot stuff with their right hand because there's a ton of dots, T's, and I's on those proclamations. We'll take your word for that. <laughs> and they still don't fit in a frame. So um, let's see. Later that night. We're going to have a virtual workshop at 6 p.m. via the Zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom. Uh, the Media District Specific Plan Update. Uh, let's say the workshop will provide an overview of draft mobility process and programs being included in the updated Media District Specific Plan. I wish I could say I was in the Media District. But we're- wait, 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 wait. Could you do me a favor? Yes. Could you read that paragraph one more time for me? This workshop will provide an overview of draft mobility pro- policies and programs to be included in the updated media district specific, specific plan. Yeah, well, you know what gets me? They pay a staffer to write this bumbo bumbo. No, 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 no. Wait, you're too early for your rent. No, no, no. They're, they're paying a consulting company to write that. See, I, that's where that money comes well, in. I knew it was something. I, I got to tell you, I, I've, I've been... Since I am media, uh, media um, district adjacent adjacent here now, I'm in the media yeah, you district. You don't get to say. Yeah, so it's basically unincorporated part of a Burbank. Yes, yes, uh, it is. Oh um, wait, we haven't checked in on Dodger. In a while. It, it's funny how they have. There he is. They have. Um, they have a mobility strategy. Wait, wait, you're gonna send a Burbank bus down the street or something so nobody else, nobody else can ride it? I mean, I I just don't understand what this whole thing's. I know the neighbors in this, in this neighborhood right now are very upset That's about, Jason. about the uh, development at Pass and Riverside going in. It's supposed to be a, I guess, a six or seven story building. I you know, seven with, story, right? Yeah, the, the triangle. No, that's, no, 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 no. This was where the, Kinko's was. FedEx. Oh, right. FedEx. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. right too. over there. They're going to yeah, they're going to tear out the wrong uh, intersection. They're going to tear that that whole block out in that area and. Uh, and the neighbors are very upset about it. And I, I've tr- I can imagine. I've tried to tell them. I go, you you went to city council to say no and everything else, but li- you got to remember the city council has to obey the law. They can't just right. say no. We don't like it. You can't do it. They have right. to have a reason behind their decision. There has to be an ordinance. There has to be zoning. There has to be specific things that you know they can and can't. Imp- they are not all, all powerful. Yeah, they don't have the right to just say, well, you know what, neighbors don't like it, so you can't do it. That's not how right. it works. Well, and the it, Rancho District would love that. Yes, isn't that the... Well, you know, <laughs> I, I attended uh, one of those Toluca Lake chamber meetings, and a um, good friend of mine that works over at Universal now, she used to be in the planning department at Burbank, whispered in my ear, they're all complaining about that building, but they're going to be rewriting the Media District specific plan. That building's going in. The property owner that sold it and I, that owns I, it... And guess what? Those plans are even... Basically put in. It's, They've been submitted. Yeah. So you, uh, we were contacted. We ran pictures of that, yeah. if you recall, in my Burbank. They may scale it down a little bit and things like that, but there is going to be a, a, a building there. There's that, a, that property owner has met with everybody in the community. There's one lady that lives on National that is running around with a big red flag. The sky's falling. The sky's I, I got falling. a flyer here. I got a flyer. Okay. So. And I read the flyer and I go... They just don't understand. It's just you just don't say we don't want it and it won't get put in. That's not how, you know. Tell it to Raising Canes. Tell it to the Pickwick right. Project. Tell it to the Mariposa Project, the Empire Project. Doesn't work that way, unless it's guys coming in SP thirty five. Yep, you'll have no say. Well, I don't know if it's SP thirty five though. Um, but anyhow, I'm just saying is that 
It's coming, people. I, I wish I could tell you differently, and no matter how much you stomp your feet. It's nice to want. You know? I mean, it, we're, we're... Not in my backyard. Right. Exactly. So, anyhow, th- that's going to be uh, at 6 o'clock, and, you know, I, I invite you to go to the city's website and, and get the Zoom link and Zoom in, and you would have uh, some consulting company tell you what they're they're going to do for you. And they have no clue. I've I've actually participated in in the discussion. They have no idea how things work. They don't have any idea how this. Nope. They don't know why more people they aren't. Their, their little bubble. They don't understand why more people aren't using public transportation to go to the studios and things like that. I go, you don't understand the studios. They, they don't work an eight-hour day there. Right. They work a twelve-hour day, and then they work for three months and they're gone. They don't come back. You know, they work there as long as their production goes. So they they have no idea. Um. The Burbank Art Culture Arts Commission is going to have a special meeting at 6.30 at the Colony Theater. Special so, meeting. Uh, that means that they're actually going to show up there, and they're going to have themselves a the Burbank, Art, Burbank Arts Artist Mixer. A what? Oh, did I say mixer? I think you said mixer. I specifically heard you say mixer. Oh. And then that noise, the horns went off. Oh, my goodness. After you said mixer. What does that mean? It must mean that's our word of the week. The word of the week is what? Mixer. Mixer. Oh. So uh, send us an now email. Now that everybody's awake. Yeah, send us an email <laughs> at um, contest at myburbank.com. And in the subject line, put mixer. Mixer. And Where, uh, Where's the mixer going to be? Well, we haven't finished talking about the word of the week yet. Oh, uh, where is the word of the week? They sent it to contest at myburbank.com. And, and, and you're up for a $25 gift card to Hill Street Cafe. You'll be in, lucky the, winner. in the running. In the running, like, ooh, where is it? Where is he? Anne, like Anne did yes. last week. Yes. And she won a $25 gift card to Hill Street, Hill Street Cafe. Cafe. And you could possibly win your own. Maybe you'll see, there, see her there. Yeah. You know what? I bet you people, it would be real nice if they went to... Hill Street Cafe before they go to the colony. And then on the weekend, they can go to the colony and watch Footloose. The The show Footloose is running this week, and they have an ad in myburbank.com. There you go. Uh, there'll be a reception following, fo- allowing an opportunity for artists to communicate on arts related to matters in Burbank. This is actually a oh, that's meeting. Cool. This is actually an official um, Brown Act meeting. So they have to have public comment beforehand. And the whole thing, and afterward, you know, and they have to run it like a meeting because it's not a just a get together. It may be a mixer, but it's still a uh, official city meeting. So, well, I was just told the other day, and I didn't make the red carpet bonanza that went on for Footloose, but the colony redid the lobby, and they have redecorated. And if you haven't been up there in a year or two because of COVID. Good time to go if you're a Colony Theater is making a big turnaround in a lot of ways, and they're they're doing what they promised they were going to do, and the city council made the right decision in giving them the contract, and we're very happy with what what went on. And if you wanted to talk about it with other other artists, you could go to the mixer. The mixer, you know, that brings up a good point. Will you remind me uh, when we're done with the show about a friend of mine that has does photos? It's a great place to put a photo exhibit. Up there, ah. and we should uh, communicate about that. That's I, a great idea. I knew I would remember that. We sometime. know a couple of photographers that might uh, might be looking for a place to put their photos. Yeah. Well, moving on to Thursday. Uh, after, after their after their mixer <laughs> on Wednesday night, they're going to get bright early on Thursday morning and have a meeting at nine a.m. at the uh, community services building. Can I can I break the news to you, Mister Sherwood? Yes. Nine a.m. is not. Many consider 9 a.m. not to be bright. Well, it depends on how late they go on Thursday night. Right. Well, that's true, too. That's what I'm thinking. It's it's for a lot of folks, Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. You know those artists, though. Okay, we're talking about artists. We're talking about artists. The creative types. Is the sun up at 9 a.m.? Well, the clock's just changed, so I we lose an hour back and I think, no, because it's darker later now in the morning. That's true. Sun is up later in the day. Anyway. So I qualify for still sleep time. So anyhow, uh, they're going to talk about um, you do you do you. Arts will meet at nine a.m. They're going to have a community <laughs> arts grant program update. 
Um, they're going to talk, talk about the arts grant writer program developer compensation. They want to start paying their, their grant writer more money and, and get more hours. And you know, those grants, yeah, the, if you write, grant writing is an art. It really is. Oh, yeah. Well, there are people that have their full-time job with some organizations is just to write grants. There's money out there. You have to know what grants are out there and then know how to apply for them. So, uh, and they have their subcommittee updates. So, good for them. Park and Recreation will then meet at 6 p.m. at City Hall. They're going to get a report on the Burbank Adaptive Sports Expo they had last week. And um, in their consent, consent agenda... Uh, they have a, they're going to talk about the, the, the police department's park patrol for January. And I just thought I'd throw a couple stats out for you just to, you know, give you an idea of how well the, the, the police department keeps track of things. In Jan, now we're talking January alone. It, it was a cold month. It was raining. And, but still there were 103 graffiti incidents during the month. 35 of those were at Isaiah park and 27 were at the Valley skate park adjacent to North Hollywood. So we kind of, I wonder where a lot of that crime came from. But, of course, the city does such a great job in removing graffiti, you probably never see it. And, Ross, I believe, sure, the 311 app will, if you report graffiti there. and On I, the next day. Yeah, the next day, that, that graffiti's gone. So, you know what? Come and, we come and do it. We're, it you're not going to have to show. It's not going to be like downtown L.A. where a building's going to sit there for forever. So, hopefully... Um, you can, that'll, that'll work out. So, um, during the month, the, the parks with the most calls for service for the police were Isaiah McCambridge. They both had five calls each where people called for the police. The Bell and Verdugo and Miller each had four. Now, now I want to regress just as a drop here because many years ago, Burbank Neighborhood Radio Watch. That's why we assembled. It was to do park patrol and to do report these acts of vandalism. And then they had a dedicated park patrol. Now, most people don't understand. Police officers walk through the park. They get assigned. And reading this report, you notice how many man hours? If they all get, I, I think it was like 45 to 50 man hours. That's a, a police officer's week's worth of work on getting, when they get called out to. Uh, going to, why don't you talk about what's going on Friday night? I believe BTAC, Burbank Temporary Aid, is having their gala up at the Castaways celebrating 50 years of service here in Burbank. Wow. They are celebrating the late Larry Stamper. Who a uh, former mayor, who is very involved with BTAC, volunteer Dorothy Murray, and the Burbank Chamber of Commerce. There are tick. I probably most galas will take tickets, money at the door if you want. It's up at the Castaways Friday for Friday night. I'll be there shooting it. They're gonna order. Um, like I say, uh, honor some great people living and gone, and uh, it's a good show. Absolutely. That's great. I, I, I'm going to throw something in, piggyback onto that a little bit. Um, and I, I salute BTEC for having it here in Burbank. But a lot of our, a lot of our organizations are, you know, this is what we call gala season. Everyone wants to have their gala. But they're having them outside of Burbank. And I'm a little bit down on that, you know. They come to the citizens of Burbank all the time for their fundraising and to donate money and services and time and everything else. And then they take their their big ceremonies and awards things and they move them outside of Burbank where now the Burbank businesses are not benefiting from the money that's being raised here in Burbank. Um, I got a little bit of a problem with that. You know, what, what, what's wrong with our meeting hall? We have a lot of great meeting halls here. We have a great lot of great facilities. Yeah, okay, I mean, they would be the sexiest in town. But the Castaways is always a nice place to go. Um, I know we lost we lost Pickwick. I don't, I don't know if the gardens are still working or not. I think they're done. But the problem we still got other places in town. And for some reason, though, why are we going outside of, of, of Burbank for all these 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 things and spending money outside of our city? I, I'm just not a I'm not a fan of it. So 
But it also makes you think, I just recently heard one of those organizations moved out of Burbank because they can't get spaces in Burbank to have their offices. Okay, well, I, I, okay, I understand that that's one place, but I'm talking about, we know there's right. multiple multiple places not having their... Well, I always get, and I'm the one that usually gets. I'm not going to call anybody out by name. I'm just I'm just bringing out the, the well, generalization. to drive out of Burbank for 20, 30 minutes, half an hour to attend a fundraiser when it could be done right here in Burbank. Yes. You know, using Burbank rentals, Burbank uh, caterers, Burbank, you know. I just think you need to support the hand that feeds you, you know? Very so, true. Okay, enough of that. Um, moving on to the, to the weekend, uh, the Burbank Parks Department, uh, Parks and Recreation is going to have a um, event at Johnny Carson Park from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, I guess we're going to show off their summer camps. You can meet the camp instructors. You see demos, games, and they have fun prizes. And it, it's free. It's like your mattress. It's like your mattress, yes. <laughs> so, um, but that's going to be on uh, on Saturday from 10 to 1 at Johnny Carson. And it'll be nice weather out there for a change. So, so take the kids, go out there, and have some fun. Um, and then finally on on Sunday, I thought it's yeah, technically the weekend, but uh, Sunday we're still going to talk about. Uh, it's it's uh, Burbank night at the L.A. Clipper game, which so uh, go down to the crypt and cheer on them Clippers. You know, actually the Clippers are playing right now. Um, they're the number two seed in the NBA, and they're at the three games behind being the number one seed for the playoffs. So it's a good time for it to be Burbank night. Yeah, it's a good time to be a Clipper. A lot of people fan watching. Too. So, and it'll also be the last year you go see the Clippers have a home game at the Crypt, because next year they moved to their new facility in Inglewood. So, How do you like them bananas. How do you like them? Yeah. How do you like dem apples? You know, I just noticed on there's a new clock in town. Did you know that? I did not know that. Rotary. We talked about it. Oh, that's on this the, show, up by the uh, police station, that little. See, you uh, did know about it. I, we talked about. Blah, 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 we blah, talked blah, about blah, it. Yeah, I didn't know about it. Didn't know it was installed yet, though. Well, I guess <laughs> there hasn't been a ceremony yet, but it's installed. Hopefully, they'll tell us if there's a ceremony. You're very true. Uh, I believe this is a Rotary event, and our ace Rotary reporter, Lynn Lipinski who is doing an excellent job on our clubs. Oh, great job. Anybody want to know about club or how to join a club or what's going like on Social at clubs? clubs, social activities, Rotary, things like that. Profits. And yep. if you have a club and like you get publicity for it, ah. invite Lynn. That's right. She'll be there covering our story Friday night at BTAC. But the clock is uh, at Palm and 3rd with that little park. I, I don't That park has a name, but I... Well, you brought it up. Give us a name. I have to go look. There's a plaque out there. I don't think they're done because it's I a, I think it's, a, it's a walkway. I think more than a park. I think it's a, a yeah. And they put people's a scene area. There. Now, did somebody have to run up there at two a.m. Sunday morning to I, move I, it ahead an hour? I looked at the numbers, and I don't think they've moved yet. I don't think it's been no. turned on. Is it an analog clock? Or yeah, an old, wrong, you know, yeah, real yeah, old timey clock. Yeah. Do you know? Nice. Do you actually know they did a study a few years ago, and there are are a number of kids under 20 years old who do not know how to read the time on an old ha clock with hands on it. Oh, some of the funniest videos digital. you'll see is they'll throw a, an old rotary phone in front of a, like a, oh, a yeah. millennial and they won't know how to, <laughs> what is this? We had a wall, dial phone, this? a wall phone. Used to hate people oh, that had zeros in their phone numbers. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> have to go all the way to the end, wait for it to come all the way back. What I used to hate was we used to call our numbers Victoria. Oh, well, the old like switchboard. Yeah, Victoria nine. Like, no, uh, our our number here at the house was Victoria nine four zero zero three. And uh, how about how about the old gym in L.A. the, the for wrestling, Richmond nine five one seven one. Don't oh delay. God. Oh my gosh! But by today, we yeah. we shot roller right. derby. Yeah, there. Dick Lane and wrestling. Where's that pen, Craig? I, I, I'm already holding it. Oh, up. I thought so. <laughs> I already have it up. The zapper. Did you know Holy. when you had a wall phone, what CHP number was? You can call in the CHP dispatch. Zenith one two thousand on your avocado green wall phone. You ha you had one with you with the cord long enough to go all the way to the master bedroom. <laughs> but anyway, we digress because we have reached that point of the show that everybody stays up for, and that is of everybody's course. favorite part. Ross's, Ross's rant. rant. Ross's, Ross's rant. rant. Ross's, Ross's rant. rant. I take a flame through to this place. Hey, what's up, Doc? Let the fire burn. Just light that fire. Wow, what an intro! I'll tell you, I got to come up. You know. 
with good rants and so forth. Well, but up. You, he never seemed to really have a shortage, though. Yeah, you're right. You, you have know, a whole week to notice something. All I got to do is drive around Burbank for five minutes. But this time, I will say that I got this rant from my son. This was mailed to us from? He, going up Hollywood Way. It's in the Benson DNA then. Oh, yeah. He calls me and tells me about his complaints. Driving up Hollywood Way to get on the northbound I-5 freeway. There was a pothole that was so big. How big was it? Apollo 15 could have landed in it and you wouldn't have seen it. He hit this thing so hard, his, air, his hip hubcap went airborne. He has a hubcap? He didn't. Oh. It ripped he, it right out of the car. Well, I went on Facebook. Would you believe there was a post and how many people hit this Does pothole? it have its own Facebook page? The pothole has well, its own Facebook yeah. page. Well, what, but was it in Burbank? No. Ooh. Half a block out of Burbank, but you want to get well. get this. My son went back, sitting there. Somebody had put a cone in it later in the day. Yeah, on the roof of the day. car that was in it. Right. <laughs> and he looked over on the center divider, and there was his upcap. He got out, saved the money. Oh, still having, there? Yep, got his upcap Unscathed. Back. So, but I'll tell you, Burbank, you have up. You got to have an upcap. If you have a pothole, <laughs> I'll tell you, they'll come out and they'll cover that three Burbank three one one. I tell you that you know you could tell when you live in Burbank when it rains. Yeah, I was actually just looking at the uh, the Burbank app on my phone this afternoon to see what options have been added to it. They're always adding different surfaces. Did you notice your favorite? Which one? Cars seventy after seventy two hours, you can put it on there, and they will doc document it and cite Where it. Where do you put that? I didn't see that one. It's I was looking for illegal parking, which still really isn't specifically on there. It could fall yeah, under a couple of categories. Oh, it just yeah. Last week we got a oh email that you can complain about. Oh, you'll have cars. to show me. We used to be able to listen to the parking Control. people, but we can't hear them anymore. They're uh, you see, it, it took the, they're, the, they're till encrypted. the end of the show, but you got it in. I did. They're encrypted got it now. In. You can't, can't hear, hear them anymore. But I will say that uh, you definitely know when you're driving around Burbank because our streets drain, there aren't potholes, the lights go on, and the trash gets dumped. In that order. And picked up, actually. Yeah, right. So, you know, I'll just tell you, you drive around and you notice stuff like that, and it still gets me. How many times on this show have I complained about people leaving their trash, not on their trash day? Or heavy duty pickup, drive down Scott Road. It looks like well, I won't say. Yeah, well, th th you you get a lot of that when you have areas uh, with a lot of apartment buildings because you have so many people in a condensed area. There's really no place for them to put a lot of that stuff. Right, right. But I have personally used the bulky item pickup a couple times in the last couple of months because I had some old furniture to get rid of, and put it put it out and rain or shine, holiday or not. When they when they tell you they're going to be there to pick it up, it's on gone. Your, on your trash day, now I don't know up. if it's all them picking it up or other people are picking it up overnight. I was just going to say I went to the Blarney Stone the other day, and that couch you used to have. They got it. It's it's the in the Blarney pool. Stone, huh? It's in the yeah. pool in the pool room. No, don't do it. the the Blarney Stone's I'll been get, go, gone get, for. I'll get my pen. It's been gone for thirty years. You know, there's some uh, um, episode special podcast episode you guys are putting together that it. it, it have yet to get an air date on it, but it's going to involve talking about restaurants, restaurants that used to be in, in Burbank. And I know the audience is eagerly awaiting it because we've been teasing it for so long now. Well, we're still waiting. Can I for get you to agree on a date? Restaurants. Can I put you on the spot and can we get a date for that tonight? Is that going to be a live show? No, that will not be a live show. How about a call in show? That will not be a call in show either. <laughs> unless <laughs> unless uh, you want to start running the, uh, the hardware, you're more than welcome to do all that. Wait a minute. Do I have to wear an envelope? But I think that day? it's safe to say this is probably it'll probably be a two-parter, and within the next, we uh, may I have think it, the next couple of weeks. Next, we may have it up by Saturday. We may have Ooh, it up by Saturday. All right, it's on the calendar, everybody. It's on the calendar. I got them to I nailed them down to put a date on the calendar to record it, and that'll only be part one. That'll be part one, but at least you'll have something to listen to. You know, I got a question. Was Tiny Nailers <laughs> on that list? Can Jim Neighbors? How, how would I know if Tiny he, he hasn't was, heard the show yet. was on the list that you made? Okay. You know what? Everyone Yankee. will find out together after they listen to the show. Yankee Peddler? But just think, the, the longer you keep, you take to record the show, the longer the, longer the list is going to get. Hair's going right, to grow. Then there'll be a part three down the road somewhere. 
There yeah. probably will be. It'll be an ongoing series. Just for you guys, I'll go to that Bunt Cake place, and I'll buy us all a round of Bunt Cakes. Well, and we could do a whole episode on all of the 24-hour restaurants that are open and running in Burma. Well, maybe not. By the way, you talked about that place, that crumble cookie place on Magnolia and Hollywood. Okay, the parking up, ready? With the and, parking on the roof? And the, yeah, the parking on the roof. And the other day, we actually, my, myself and a friend, we were driving over to Coral Cafe. It was probably about 9 o'clock at night. And I looked at that corner, and it was open. And I looked, and there was nobody parked in the green zone right next to it. So we stopped, had a couple of those. They're all on the roof, because yeah. Ross told them last and, time. And we, but there was no line. There was nothing. Nobody in the place. So and, how did the cookie crumble? It crumbled. It was phenomenal. Really? I, I you know, to me, a cookie, well, now, I love now, cookies, but. I love cookies. Oh, those cookies. But now that I know you can park on the roof, now I'll just go right there. And I'll or go you go at 9 o'clock at night, just park right next to it and walk right in. No, no no lines. Now you're giving all the secrets away. Well, that's why you listen to the show, isn't it? Well, see, that's why you listen. And somebody that's told me I, the two blocks up, Bagel Boss is opening this month. I can't wait for fresh bagels. How do you like them pastrami's? <laughs> And don't forget what Sunday is. What's Sunday? Uh, or uh, well, this week it was the Oscar. It's Clipper Day. Isn't it St. Patrick's Day? The seventeenth. Is that okay? And what is it, it is? Go buy your pastrami. Okay. You used to be able to. Go, oh, here's a. Well, this was Toluca Lake. We used to be able to go to Timmy Nolan's and get oh, the yeah. bread bowl of. Uh, <laughs> Stu, click, click, click. <laughs> All right, okay. You're, you're trying to click, clicking for me now. All right, yeah, it's, you see, yeah. it's easier down that rabbit it's hole. It's the isn't it? end of the show. It's easier down that rabbit well, hole. Well, you know, we, happens. My diuretic's just starting to kick in. So if we don't wrap it up, is that why I'm your chair is squeaking over there? <laughs> squeaking. I've been right. bouncing here for fifteen. Time to wrap minutes. up. Okay, that's Ross's wrap it up. system tells us it's time <laughs> to wrap up the show, <laughs> like clockwork. <laughs> Oh, don't get them going. That'll oh, just no. accelerate the process. That's true. Okay. Oh, Anyhow, man. Thank you very much for listening. We always appreciate it. Uh, for Craig Sherwood and for this week's Craig Durling. Me? Who will be gone for the next couple of weeks on assignment. Oh, I know. And, of course, Ross Benson, who will be here. Well, wait a minute. Do we call you Craig Durling or Oscar? Uh. Well, I would. I, I like I said, I didn't win anything, so you oh. can't call me Oscar. I don't have one. Until next week, folks, tune in for another round of the week that was, the week that will be. We'll see you in a week. Good night, everybody. My Burbank Talks would like to thank all of My Burbank's advertisers for their continued support. Burbank Water and Power, Cusimano Real Estate Group, UME Credit Union, Burbank Chamber of Commerce, Game Credit Union, Providence St. Joseph Medical Center, Community Chevrolet, Media City Credit Union, UCLA Health, Tequila's Burbank, Logix Credit Union, Hill Street Cafe, Bertain Escobar Wealth Management, and the UPS Store on 3rd Street.